So good morning, everyone. And I'm taking forward from the talk by Andre and the last question about the data quality and what's happening in India about data and data quality and the standardization part. Um, so to start with, um, as we discussed in last talk, that data is key for helping AI system to learn effectively, right? So we need to have data being comprehensive, where we need to have all the necessary information available for systems to train. We need to have uh, data being consistent in the sense the we have the similar information across system so that it is collected and then worked upon. We need to have data to be accurate, uh, where it reflects the real world object. And we know the lot of problems where you do uh, training on the sample data set and then it doesn't work on the real system. So yes, you need to have data which is accurate as well. And it should be available timely, um, as was talked that uh, if data is available whenever it is required, then it's better to work and uh, for the AI systems, better to learn. Uh, it has to be valid in the sense it should conform uh, to certain uh, structural definitions. You, you should know what's coming where and how the data is structured. And yes, every entry has to be unique because uh, the first step in AI uh, systems is where we try to do data cleaning. Uh, data processing. Um, we remove null entries, we remove duplicates, we try to remove the entries which are empty, uh, not of use, and so on. So we need to have the data also unique. So all of it um, leads us towards standardization of this data uh, and, and the structures, uh, which is very, very important. So why do we need electronic health record standards? Uh, of course, EHRs are ultimately collection of medical records generated uh, during different clinical encounters or event uh, during the patient, patient care and in an electronic format. And there are many fold benefits of it. Uh, we know that we use electronic health records for better and evidence-based care. Uh, we can have multiple systems working on this data, coming up with multiple different results. The AI system needs data ultimately. Uh, we can avoid unnecessary tests, being medical history available uh, with the healthcare providers uh, for usage. We do a lot of, on, on top of data, we can do a lot of activities. Even the health policy creation uh, can be one of the beneficial um, uh, things when you have electronic health records available. And ultimately, we can uh, use this data for understanding the underlying issues in healthcare systems, try to improve processes, patient care, and so on. So all of it translating into ultimately improved patient healthcare. And without standards and interoperability, it's, it's not possible. We can't imagine of having a lifelong electronic health record of a patient. So, uh, what's happening about EHR standards in India? So Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has uh, released electronic health record standards for India in 2013 and were revised in 2016. And these standards are, are provide, uh, defined from the various aspects of healthcare system uh, on, on the different interoperability levels. So there are foundational standards, which are essential for any healthcare system, like security standards, requirements of an electronic health record system, there are standards which, define, which helps you to define structures uh, like HL7, FHIR, um, DICOM, HL7 CCD, ISO 13606, and so on. There are standards which help you do semantic interoperability, like code systems. Uh, everyone must be knowing about ICD-10 here, ICD here, but SNOMED, LOINC, and other coding systems and terminologies are there. And then there are standards which can help you to standardize organizational processes like um, ISO 1390, uh, 940, which helps you to standardize the organizational processes of healthcare, taking care of patients, and so on. And the ultimate vis vision behind these standards is to build an interoperable healthcare system in country. Uh, these are the broad uh, coverages of uh, standards. Uh, they are broadly categorized into architecture and data content standards, information exchange standards, security and privacy standards. Um, so 
uh, how does how do you think of healthcare interoperability? So in order to uh, imagine having the multiple health systems uh, which are collecting data in a standardized form, and then this data uh, from the primary data usage of medical uh, records are being used for secondary purposes, uh, for sharing medical records, for doing clinical research, uh, for even public health surveillance system. But all of it is not possible until you have standards in place. Standards for structures, syntactic standards, standard for semantic interoperability, standards for processes, workflow. And there are a set of standards out there. So how do you imagine standards in an EHR? Um, considering a case uh, where you can see a very normal, simple, human-readable health record, uh, where all the details of patient encounter are being documented, patient demographics, doctors, informa clinicians' information, uh, the medical information uh, about the encounter, the chief complaints, uh, family history, physical examination, and the medication thereof. A, a sm small outpatient consultation note. Now, how does it look on a computer system? So this is for the, uh, clear for the healthcare providers, but this is how it looks, uh, looks in for a computer system where it is structured and standardized. It is being... Uh, it is being created in a way it can be validated, processed by a computer system. This is a typical uh, fire health record, fire-based health record. And then how does it look in semantic, when it, we, we call it as a semantic interoperable? Uh, so you can see the clinical information is coded with clinical terminology. You can see here some SNOMED codes uh, can be seen here for the medical condition, foot swelling, and uh, for the medication being given to the patient. So this is how it looks uh, in a semantic uh, interoperable health record. And how does it look on wire? So this is about data. This is about security, where uh, data is shared securely on wire, encrypted uh, with the defined standard encryption. And that's how standard plays role. So for, for a healthcare provider, it's not visible, but it's for computers, machines to process, and ultimately for AI systems to use. So that's how the standards of different category are implementable at different places. Taking in another example of standards in radiation oncology, there's a team who sits beside me in, in, in our lab who is working for development of a treatment planning system for radiation oncology who also kind of uses DICOM as a base standard for the whole workflow of this radiation oncology TPS. And uh, they use DICOM base standard for image capture, acquisition, storage, processing, communicating with PACs, and all the data generated by this treatment planning system also comes in DICOM RT extension. And this is done to ensure there is interoperability uh, there is an ace of data exchange between other systems, other devices, uh, the devices with which uh, the TPS is being planned for integration, and any other uh, treatment planning uh, or, or radiation therapy devices. And this, this, this is what is one of the example where uh, standards can play a role, make it interoperable with any system which comes, which is also standard compliant. So this solves the problem of data sharing. This solves the problem of uh, data availability. This solves the problem of data being clean and valid. Um, I'll talk about a little bit about Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, where also, uh, the standards are also being uh, implemented and are in place. So the Aishman Bharat Digital Mission aims to uh, create a digital health infrastructure in our country where all the health systems are expected to communicate with each other uh, through the digital health infrastructure of ABDM. And uh, the ultimate vision of ABDM is to uh, target towards universal health coverage for our country. And this mission was announced in August 2020 and is being nationwide rolled out from September 2021, and a lot of activities are happening in Aishman Bharat Digital Mission. This digital mission refers to National Digital Health Blueprint, which was a guideline released by our ministry, where different set of standards were defined for all the systems in India to adhere to while communicating with each other. 
these are the uh, this is the open architecture of ABDM, where it is uh, it's a layered architecture and it uses existing India's public uh, digital goods like Aadhaar, UPI payments, e-sign, DigiLocker, consent artifact, which is defined by MITI. And then there are, on top of it, there are digital uh, health data exchange building blocks, uh, where one of the major building block is the registries, where um, ABHA registry has been created for all the patients. We have registry for healthcare professionals, registry for healthcare facilities, uh, even there is a drug registry coming in uh, in some time. But the middle um, uh, block where exchange is being talked about, uh, which is what I'm focusing uh, more in the coming slides, is the development of open APIs, which every health system can adhere to, and then the standardized health records, which are defined by NDHM, uh, by ABDM, for every health system to uh, adopt and implement to. And then there is a whole consent management framework where data is being shared with the consents from patient uh, for the purpose for which <coughs> Uh, the health data is requested by the uh, health information users. And then uh, the another building block about health claim exchange is also being planned where um, the open APIs for communication for um, automated uh, health claim exchange is being planned. Currently we have uh, everything a manual process and every uh, payer and the provider has a different channel of communication for claim processing. So that's being targeted where we plan to come up on a single national platform for health claim exchange as well. And on top of this, uh, the further building, uh, further layers are there for health services, like discovering a doctor, uh, booking an appointment, uh, receiving a consultation or receiving lab reports and so on. So there are multiple healthcare services uh, being provided on top of this all building blocks on ABDM. And then ultimately on top there are healthcare applications and users. So focusing on the standardized health records in ABDM, uh, this is how the data flow uh, is visualized in ABDM, where all the hospitals who generate, all the healthcare providers who generate health information are referred to as health information providers, HIPs, where hospitals, diagnostic centers, and clinics are considered. And then the, all the HIPs are sharing data through HRPs, health repository providers, which are nothing but the EMR solutions, LMS uh, solutions, clinic solutions, or any other softwares which the, uh, the hospitals are using. And these HRPs have to adhere to standards like SNOMED, LOINC, ICD-10, FHIR for sharing data. And this data goes through these ABDM building blocks, uh, essentially the consent manager and the different registries that are there. And the health information users, like patients, through their PHRs or any other hospitals or healthcare providers who are trying to access this health data, can receive this uh, data through the ABDM building blocks. So this is how the whole architecture or the data flow for ABDM looks like. Uh, so this ABDM implementation is based on the guidelines which are provided by NDHB, and there are specific uh, standards which are chosen from the broad EHR standards from in, for India. Uh, those are FHIR, DICOM, SNOMED CT, LOINC, and ICD. And uh, a set of essential and minimum class health record artifacts were also chosen uh, because the use case on ABDM is not to collect all the health information necessary for managing a hospital, but uh, to be able to support continuity of care for patients. So imagine uh, when a patient goes from one facility to other facility, what all information is needed for continuity of care of that patient is expected to be flowing through Aishman Bharat Digital Mission Network. So there are certain design considerations uh, for developing this uh, standard structures. We call them as HI types, health information types. Uh, where aim is to cover most of the health, re health record document sharing uh, in a care setting, uh, so that minimally to fully structured health data exchange is possible. Then uh, the plan was to ensure there is easy onboarding of all these non-standard as well as non-structured data systems to start with, and slowly make, make sure that those data systems 
kind of um, enhance themselves to be more structured over the time and then enable integration with uh, for fully structured terminology coded data systems as well. So the plan was to cater to all existing historic data, existing systems, as well as any futuristic systems which are going to come in future uh, in our country. So uh, FHIR was considered as a standard for data structure and, um, and was used for a data exchange because it has extensive metadata and, and coverage. Uh, it is called as internet-based standard because it uses the uh, latest paradigm for data exchange, uh, the web services, XML and JSON-based data sharing, human-readable headers, and so on. So multiple uh, features are provided by FHIR standards, and that's why it was chosen. The data structures that are defined in FHIR covers most of the use cases in healthcare settings. So uh, that's also makes it a primary candidate for selection. And then there are various reference implementations available for FHIR and a very broad um, and very vibrant user community, community is also there to support integration. So what were the approaches used for data sharing for NDHM, ABDM? Um, uh, the, the HI types that were defined looking at continuity of care record and fast healthcare interoperability resource as a standard uh, were looked into supporting three types of records. One is scan document. Uh, why is that? Because they should support us uploading of the historic data. We have a lot of historic data. Uh, me as a patient also have my health records uh, folder, a folder at my home which has multiple health records stored. So with the thought that in future if we have more um, OCR based systems, NLP based systems can capture this data and convert it into standard format. The second way of data capture was to support structured data without standard terminology. So for the health system which have some or the other type of structured data available. So not to start doing complete standardization in one go but at least enable the data sharing on ABDM and those structured data is possibly available for anyone to refer and use. And then the third was uh, to look into the fully structured data with coding and terminology standards. Uh, for this, this actually is the, is the finest way of data sharing and the expected way of data sharing where data is coded, completely computer processable, um, the accuracy can be guaranteed to the maximum and it is ready for data analytics or any other uh, decision support systems for usage, uh, even for the AI systems for usage and so on. And DICOM was considered as a standard for medical images, FHIR standard support attaching DICOM images also on top. So you can see certain examples over here, the structured data where abdomen pain is, uh, is being provided in the data format but not being coded. So uh, essentially machines may not be accurately process it, but you need NLP kind of systems or tools or some structure um, analyzing systems to capture and you understand this data. But the last one were completely coded terminology uh, based uh, data. That's what is expected ultimately. So these are the broad HI types. Uh, these are the broad mechanism of supporting HI types. Now what all clinical artifacts are supported? Uh, looking at continuity of care scenario, uh, prescription record, there is a standard structure defined for prescription record, for diagnostic report, for discharge summaries in, in OPD settings, uh, for outpatient consultation notes, uh, for immunization records, uh, for wellness records where uh, patients using their PHR uh, can use the uh, smart devices like your smart watches and generate their daily health records and they want to capture it in their PHRs, that should also be possible and that's where wellness record also comes in picture. And then ultimately there is a health document record which is a scan document where patients themselves want to capture all their historic data and they don't know really where it gets classified, whether it's a prescription or whether it's a diagnostic report, can capture that data into that health record document. So this is how the different HI types are there and there is an implementation guide for using this standard structure, uh, for validating this standard structure, certain examples are also listed, are being available on, uh, on the website. You can just search Aishman Bharat Digital Mission 
NRCS or health records, uh, you will get that implementation guide. So how do we achieve standardization? Now we talked about what standards are there and we have the implementation guide. Now what's the starting point? How do I start implementing standards? So we have something called National Resource Center for EHR Standards in India. It's been set up by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare at CDAC Pune. Uh, this resource center is being formed to support adoption and implementation of all the health standards in India to everyone including public as well as private uh, implementers, hospitals, healthcare providers. Um, the resource center uh, provides multiple services. Uh, we, the resource center has two, uh, one of the area of activity is tools and technology development where it provides free and open source standard toolkits for integration of standards. It does provide free education and training through its workshop on demand need based trainings uh, understanding of tools, how to integrate them, how to use them. Um, it does also uh, provide national releases. So the resource center has recently, I mean, last two years, it's been releasing common drug codes for India, which was a gap identified. And we have the drug codes uh, for country uh, already released by this resource center, and it's being planned for integration in uh, the drug registry in ABDM. Uh, the resource center also releases uh, specific extensions for terminology for Ayush as well, because it is our country specific requirement and we need coding and standardization of Ayush as an area as well. So the resource center works in this area um, uh, also. And then uh, there is an implementation support activity where um, we sit and assist all the implementers uh, on how to integrate standard, identifying which standard is required to be integrated. Even we assist uh, in doing any POCs or troubleshooting for implementation, where you went wrong, how do you correct it, or whether it is right or not. So all of these answers can be given by the resource center. Uh, we do license with standard development organizations like BIS, Bureau of Indian Standard, uh, WHO, SNOMED International, HL7 International and so on. Um, and there is one specific activity, we call it as advisory and consultation. It is for, um, for multiple departments, divisions, hospitals to help them plan, standardize uh, their solutions, their systems, their processes and so on. So how do we again start standard adoption? Uh, the EHR Standards for India has 35 odd standards listed. So the best way is to look into your use case, look into your software, what kind of healthcare solution you have, whether it's a EMR, whether it's HMIS solution, whether it's some use case specific, a national health program related solution and so on, and then start prioritizing it. Identify which are applicable standards and then take step-by-step -step approach. It is not expected that one goes and use all the standards. Standards are very complex, but it, those are for software systems to implement, for the software developers to implement, but one can prioritize, take steps, and standardize. For example, you can start with standards which are um, mandated by ABDM. That's the future, and we need to start standardizing, and then slowly look for the other standards which are applicable from the whole standard set. Um, and then, what next? You build knowledge on EHR standards. There are already free uh, courses available for our country for clinical terminology, specifically for the healthcare professionals. They can do foundation courses, implementation courses for clinicians, for data analytics, and so on. There are other courses by other international SDOs, and NRCS also conducts um, need-based personalized trainings on standards as well as the workshops. So, uh, in, by any of the medium, one can build knowledge on standard. One needs to know what is needed so that you can ask for right standards. And then be the champion for healthcare providers. Ask for a EHR standard compliant healthcare solution. Build awareness about standard, that they, those needs to be there whenever you buy, procure a standard system. And for implementers and software providers, um, the software Solution developers has uh, uh, various principles for designing and developing a software. We call it as, uh, you know, uh, they should be uh, modular by design. The software should be reusable by de design. 
So they need to add one more design principle when it comes to healthcare solutions, those needs to be interoperable by design so that they adopt standard and they use these standards. And then upgrade uh, the existing system slowly, uh, one by one, um, by prioritizing and using different set of standards. Um, and then support also building in national standards. Uh, so NRCS um, does provide the mechanism uh, through various media, uh, various communication channel, where you can also tell what is the gap, what is not available, how do you standardize something, and then we can pick that up, and then you can also participate in standard development process. For example, Ames New Delhi helped us validate the whole drug model when we started doing coding of drug codes. Um, and then that became a base, and we started building drug codes on top of it, and, and so on. So we have to come together to uh, finally have the national standards built together. Um, and, uh, and then be the champions. So if you are already a standard compliant solution, then register yourself. Tell the world that you have implemented standard. Lead by example, showcase your uh, solution at uh, national resource centers event or any other events. Uh, also, Aishman Bharat Digital Mission also have the ABDM partners page where the implementers' names have been listed, uh, the information has been provided, what type of solution it is, how to use it. Uh, there are other registries available. Even uh, international standard development organizations also have some pages where you can uh, provide uh, information of your solution and make it available for anyone to use, uh, stating it's being a standard compliant solution. Uh, that's it, so NRCS is uh, you can consider it as a partner for health system standardization for everyone. So we assist from adoption to planning to procurement, design, development, deployment, and ultimately use of standard compliant health system. Uh, and all the activities of NRCS is free for anyone in our country. Uh, we have so far sensitized over 13,000 plus healthcare, uh, healthcare professionals, IT vendors, and so on. And done uh, 250 plus workshops and training to sensitize everyone in, in our country. And uh, that's it, I would like so, to say thank you and if you have any questions, please. Uh, thank you, ma'am. A uh, lot of work has gone into this uh, standardization. So uh, we'll have one or two questions because we'll have to break for coffee. So yeah. So please use the mic. Ma'am, you explained well about the standardization and stand standards. Well, one simple question. You explained everywhere about ICD-10. Already we announced ICD-11. Why? Uh, we are converting our software to ICD-11 coding structure and uh, every, that kind of coding we are doing. After mm -hmm. that, on, all these kind of sessions are explaining about only ICD-10, these Correct. kind of things, how we can solve. Right, right. So, uh, yes, um, as you said, ICD-11 has been already announced and India also has um, adopted uh, in the uh, World Assembly uh, where it said that it is going to adopt ICD-11. Uh, as of now, all our health systems are on ICD-10 and I think almost all the countries have the same situation. Everyone is trying to look into adopting ICD-11 and trying to see how do they, you know, go forward. How do they do the conversion, mapping, system trans, uh, you know, transformation, and also learning the ground level healthcare professionals who are al al earlier documenting ICD-10 based coding and all. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And yet, uh, government has, I mean, it's in a planning process and it's not being announced. So when those will come in the list of notified standard for adoption, I will definitely include ICD-11 out there. But yes, um, at NRCS, we have started sensitizing um, the systems um, developers on ICD-11 and we are helping them to understand how to in integrate and what are do's and don'ts. Uh, how we should not do the things which we did in the past where uh, healthcare providers are required to learn ICD-10 codes, you know, in, in, in the 
care settings and then document that particular code so not to do not to go with that traditional way and uh, let healthcare providers do their job and let the computers and machine do their job so how do you differentiate that so all of that training and sensitization we've already initiated uh, and slowly whoever are adopting we're telling them how do they use nomad and do the mapping at the back end uh, get the icd 11 and 10 codes for reporting purposes so all of these activities are yes all part and parcel of our work so, so we are out of time now so we'll i think ma'am will be happy to meet you over coffee and answer your questions Uh, I've been allowed one more question. Thank you. Hi, hi. Uh, thank you, ma'am. My, uh, my name is Vergis. I'm from the Division of Medical Informatics in St. John's uh, Research Institute. Um, my training is in community medicine and in health informatics. Uh, I just wanted to ask you a question. First of all, thank you for supporting uh, SNOMED CT courses online. Uh, it's been great help. Um, Ma'am, you've talked about guidelines and standards for EHR and how to get people to adopt standards for EHR. Um, my question is, we have a much more, I think we have a much more pressing problem in terms of how do we get organizations to adopt EHRs in the first place. So uh, are we going to see guidelines for how to design and implement solutions that don't get in the way in workflows? We, we've seen other, organ uh, other countries have standards in terms of you know, they require uh, a solution to display human-centered design, some, some amount of user testing and things like that. So are we going to see that also in India? Or is anyone thinking about it or not? So uh, uh, I think from standards perspective, uh, one of the area that needs to be focused on is the mandation. Uh, that's where I think your question was also towards uh, it, that the, how do you, mandate implementation of these standards in, in the different solution. So one way that is happening in India is, if you want to onboard on ABDM, there is no other way but the standard-based health records. So you have to do mapping, you have to either do a mapping, a one-time mapping, or you have to either change your current structures, or you have to adopt to a new system to be able to share data on ABDM. And that's the future. Sooner or later, all the health, health systems uh, implementers and all the hospitals, healthcare providers have to onboard. So, for example, uh, we started with uh, Ayushman, uh, Ayushman Bharat scheme for ins health insurance. Slowly, it was mandated to all the healthcare providers who want to support this scheme have to send data uh, online only, right? So that way, slowly, uh, this kind of mandation, indirect mandation is going to come where all systems have to come to standards some or the other day. So sooner is faster. That's, that's uh, the first aspect. And the second aspect is um, uh, NHA is looking into the ways of ensuring there is a more onboarding of all the different healthcare providers and IT solution providers. And there is a incentivization scheme that is already there in place. But it's not for standard. It is for uh, it is for the type the the standardized data generated per month, per day, per hospital. So there is some combination of uh, these requirements are there for the scheme uh, that all information is available on ABDM website. So you can refer to that information. Yeah, ma'am. I was really thinking not so much about the standards, but to get someone to use an EHR in the first place. If it's not been designed in a way that, if it's, des if it's been designed in a way that interrupts their uh, work. Excuse me, we'll have to yeah. stop now. You can continue this over the coffee break. Yeah. No problem, we can talk again in person. <laughs>